So it's a big issue now. It's the excess. We have way too much estrogen in our yeah. body, and the key yeah. is to remove that excess yeah. estrogen and increase, and not enough progesterone as well. Yeah, absolutely. Because many, um, first of all, if you're on a meat, if you're on an animal-based diet, you'll be getting estrogen from the meat and from the dairy and from the eggs. So that has to be reduced. Not necessarily cut out completely, but reduced dramatically. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you need a high fiber diet to pull out all that estrogen. Okay, so that's the dietary piece. The other piece is that we're getting estrogen from uh, many environmental chemicals. So plastics, that's right. bisphenol A is added to plastic to make it hard. Bisphenol A is estrogenic. Phthalates are added to plastic to make them soft and flexible, and they're estrogenic. Fire retardants are added to everything so to prevent it from burning, and they're estrogenic. Um, many strong solvents, cleansers, industrial cleansers are estrogenic. Pesticides mimic estrogen. So what's, what's, what's important to know is that a hormone like estrogen can only at, uh, act when it attaches to a receptor inside the cell. That's right. And all of these chemicals attach to the same receptor. We didn't know it when we created the chemicals, but we found out way too late that they're attaching to the same receptor. So from a very early age, we're getting more and more estrogen in our bodies from ingesting plastics, from breathing fire retardants, and from eating too much animal protein. Okay, and then that's causing young girls to have earlier breast development and to have more like ovarian cysts, uterine fibroids, all those diseases that are related to excess estrogen are happening. And one of the things that happens is that even in utero, in utero, when we're exposed to things like the phthalates, which are this, in the soft plastics, in utero, progesterone is decreased for life. Because we, st we have our, our, our ovaries as fetuses. We have all the eggs we're ever going to have as fetuses, right? That's right. And there's a t critical time in utero between week 6 and 16 when the whole reproductive system is affected. And the exposure to these chemicals can cause us to have low progesterone. For life. for life. So what about uh, those screens that increase the progesterone level in the body? What's your you know, I don't like to use them. I like to use mostly uh, nutrition, like, you know, the flax seeds and the soy, if you have them, you will increase the number of receptors for progesterone, and which means progesterone can work more, okay? Vitamin D B6 will increase progesterone, and then the best herb for progesterone is chase tree berry. Yeah, Vitex. Okay? Vitex. Yes. So I always try all that first. And then if you can improve the thyroid gland, you'll improve progesterone levels. If you improve adrenal function, you'll improve progesterone levels. So it's all interlinked. It's all interlinked. Linked. Because what can happen if you use progesterone cream, um, if there are any breast cancer cells present, and often we don't know that because breast cancer can take 10 years before it shows up, that progesterone can cause a breast cancer cell to metabolize progesterone differently because there's different enzymes present in a, in a breast cancer cell so that the progesterone then develop, um, is broken down into a different product that actually increases cancer growth. If there's no breast cancer present, it'll, be pr it'll usually be protective. But if there's breast cancer present, it can cause the growth. There's, a, there's something called VEGF, which is a growth factor for cancers that causes more blood, a, more, a greater blood supply. It's called angiogenesis. Mm -hmm. Increased blood supply to, to feed right. a tumor. Progesterone increases the EGF. So a tumor can possibly grow if a woman has breast cancer cells, even if she might not know it, and she's taking progesterone cream. Wow, so so you have to try to fix it in other ways. That's right, okay, excellent, wow. Um, and um, okay, so just to recap, um, so we don't, we women don't have to spend a fortune on supplement, but what like your your key your, things, the the key supplement B six, okay, a B complex, just okay. do the whole B complex, one hundred milligrams of the B complex, okay. that's number one. Vitamin D, vitamin D3. Drops is easy because one drop is a thousand international units of vitamin D. So I would suggest that everyone get their vitamin D levels checked, and it would be the D uh, hydroxy, you know. And um, it should be the can range in Canada, in the United States they have different units, but the range in Canada you want to see that it's about 150. And if it's lower than that, then take a little more, okay? But that'll be between 3,000 and maybe 7,000 
international units for most Canadian women. In other countries, it might be different depending on your sun exposure. That's but it's an right. important number to check because it's individually based. Exactly. Okay, so that's a, that would be very important. Another one would be the indole three carbonyl, um, which is from the brassica family, and that's 300 milligrams a day. Another one would just be a very good multivitamin. And in that multivitamin, you want to look for 200 micrograms of selenium. So selenium is also a mineral that's anti-cancer for all cancers. And in that multivitamin, you might also want to have about 30 milligrams of zinc, which is also an immune, immune booster and helps your liver with detoxification. Uh, you could also, as prevention, use uh, NAC, like 500 milligrams twice a day. You can use uh, something called alpha lipoic acid, 150 milligrams twice a day. Uh, let me think what else. And then and you could use curcumin. And the curcumin, I would suggest a prevention, maybe 1,000 milligrams a day. If someone had breast cancer, at least 3,000 milligrams a day or higher. So those would be the key supplements. And then the foods, every day eat two tablespoons of ground flaxseed, every day or every other day have a half cup of tofu or a tempeh. And if you are allergic to soy, which some people are, then you can use mung bean, sprout, mung bean sprouts, or also phytoestrogens, and pumpkin seeds are also good phytoestrogens, but you want to have those. And then you want to have some iodine, so that could be your kelp tablet twice a day, or seaweed every day in your diet. So it's, it's not complicated, but in your book, The Breast, I don't want to drop this so long, but in your book, The Breast Cancer, you indicate everything is, as far as the protocol and the exercise, the yeah. detoxification, and you and the diet, it's all there. Yes, and you yeah. mentioned also spit all, all the organs, the function of the organs. Like I mentioned, this is pretty complete. Uh, I'm just going to mention again the, uh, the book, It's Breast, uh, The Complete Natural Medicine Guide to Breast Cancer and to, to get yourself a copy. Where can they get a copy? Um, the most major bookstores in Canada, or they can order it from me, they can... Uh, Actually, you have an order form. Yeah, well, there's an order form in the book, but they, you can... Um, I have two websites. One uh, is called mammalive.net, M-A-M-M-A-L-I-V-E.net. And on that website, for instance, are, is a list of those top 10 foods for breast health and the top 10 supplements for breast right. cancer. For breast health, and there's a lot of research articles on that website. There's also a lot of recipes on that website, and handouts that women can use as practical tools to help prevent breast cancer. And th there will be very shortly a whole order uh, store on there where they can order the book. But right now, as of September the third, two thousand and ten, the other website has the order, the book orders on it, and that's the healthybreastprogram.on.ca. Okay. Well, we'll add the um, uh, the link on the. Um on the YouTube sure. video. So. Sure. So